New for 96. With your hosts, Kevin McCauley and Chris Wynn. Previously on New for 96. We should do that, but like a rest of development style mm-hmm. where it has nothing to do with the storyline at all and never appears again. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Would, be, that would be good. <laughs> I like the idea of repeating things because this show isn't long enough already. No. I'm sure people no. would love to hear things twice. Previously on Currently for 95. <laughs> Yeah, we should do that. They've already yeah. yeah, that this will intrigue people. This will bring them in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should we have fake sponsors? I really would love to practice my radio voice. How about just the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation? Rob we're, they're not officially a sponsor. I would love if they were a sponsor because it sounds like they have quite a bit of funding mm-hmm. and we receive none from our Radio station, the internet. Yeah, but wouldn't that really class us up compared to these people with, you know, like mattresses and Yeah. That's true. Stuff. Do people get sponsored by mattresses? Yeah, those are on the Lisa mattress. They sponsor podcasts, stuff like that. Really? Yeah. I guess. Casper. What what's a C sponsor? Like what is it like we get sponsored by like I don't know. People who produce mm. uh Mitsubishi. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing the 10-year-old Mirage. G4. G4. Oh, four-door. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they still make that? They absolutely do. And you know, you know what I saw? Yeah. We might bleep this. I saw uh, a review. I was looking. There was a scoop the other day, like, that the Epoch Times got a scoop. Like, they got, like, some leaked transcript from Papadopoulos and some... In our current events. Anyway, yes. apparently it was real. I looked on the Ecovac Times website. I searched yeah. for a known journalist. Yeah. And there was a... As of this year, like, two weeks ago, there was a review of the Mirage G4 written what? by... Written by Daryl Cost. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you think he was, like, a... He thought it was a brand new car? It was a brand new car. Do you think that it was... Well, I mean, it, it was it? He described it as beautiful. He also he, elaborating that it had halogen headlights, <laughs> a high mount rear light, and another kind of light. That's like saying, well, this person's attractive because, well, they have eyes <laughs> and a nose because it'd be weird if they didn't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, what if we said, um, new for 96, sponsored by the 1986 Toyota Tercel. I love what you do for me, <laughs> Toyota. <laughs> we should do that. We should like introduce like old car slogans. Mm-hmm. When we say when we say welcome to New for ninety six, it's yeah. it's sponsored by that guy named Welcome. Yeah, Welcome Wood Junior. Well, <laughs> welcome Wilson Junior. This is terrible. They're yeah. going to revoke my NPR membership and return to me my like ten dollars a year <laughs> until the next funding drive. Yeah. Hey, by the way. Yes. Welcome to another episode of New. Welcome, Wilson. Oh my God, (laughs) Junior. He's not officially a sponsor. (laughs) The Robert Robert M. Wood Johnson. I think it's just Robert Wood Johnson. Sponsored by. What was like Oldsmobile's tagline? Still kicking. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Like there are people who bought Oldsmobile. (laughs) Just like the people who bought. Oldsmobile up until like the 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did see there was an auction, a bat auction uh, for like that uh, performance. It was like a show, a tour show version version of the Intrigue. Yeah. But it was a concept car. It was car. a concept car. That's so cool. So it didn't have a VIN. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So I also don't understand how that works. Like how do you... At some point, does GM someone at GM say like, "Well, here goes, goodbye, prototype car that's probably meant to be crushed or put into the <laughs> archives"? Like, how does someone like get their hands on a prototype? Is what I want legally. Think, I think that they, I think they sell stuff from yeah. time to time to like clear out space. They're like, "This is not one that's historically significant. Yeah, we can part with this SEMA Oldsmobile Intrigue concept car." Yeah. 
That was, that was kind of cool looking. It was though. really cool. Just the fact it's, that it was a concept car and it yeah. was on that Auto Week cover. And it was yeah. one of one. I thought yeah. it was really cool. I mean, like it's hopped up. I forget what the specs were. I mean, yeah. like it can't it possibly the, be that good. But also, like it was kind of cool. It had the venerable thirty eight hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, horrible like gray and red two tone interior. Mm-hmm. Um, it the body kit looked decent for yeah. the intrigue. Uh, yeah. I kind of like. I will say that. I didn't hate Oldmobile's designs, in particular, mid-90s through the 2000s, even though it was just very classically, uh, well, okay, it wasn't classically GM, because the Aurora, I thought, looked very distinct. Yeah, the Aurora was very cool. Yeah. The other ones were just like watered down yeah. executions of that design language. Yeah, because the Intrigue, the Alero, like, all of those were like, they looked like the Aurora, which looked like the ev1 yeah yeah well they all live on in our ups trucks yep yes those headlights <laughs> yes oh they yeah have the headlights from one of them why why that is amazing that they stylized them it's like this is here's a horrible looking brown box that can't be designed in any <laughs> which way but we'll just like curve we'll add cur- i bet you that's from some car no it is it's an automobile what yes Really? They are from one of the Oldsmobiles from oh that era. I had no idea. Yeah. I hope it's the Aurora because I love the Aurora. No, I don't Not think the it's the Aurora. One. The new one is mm, it's no, no good. I, I like the latest new, one. That is. Didn't it end in like 03? Yes. I guess so. <laughs> they all the, did. The latest They Aurora. all ended 15 years ago. I know. Fine. New I, for 15 years ago. Yep. I The mid-90s Aurora, the first gen. Yeah. I thought it was cool. It was cool. Do you remember that the Intrigue was marketed around or marketed with the x-files no yeah that's when they had the first movie and the intrigue was like 2001 or something like that these were such weird cars like these were like premium class rental cars back in the day <laughs> when you were upgraded from well that's your what they used on Taurus x-files lx yeah every x-files they yeah the worst car. they're oh my god <laughs> I don't know what just happened. Take it down a notch. Yeah, uh, we still haven't started the show. No, we still have not officially. Um, but the X Files, all the cars in the X Files were basically like rental class cars, always. Yeah, it was like because they never Malays, drove anything else. Yeah, rental cars. Yeah, so it was always like a Taurus or like an Oldsmobile or a Pontiac of some kind. Mm-hmm. Maybe Pontiac Buicks. was too fancy. Was it? I don't mm, know. There for, was Buicks. Yeah, I, I, I think. They were all like equal tier. That's why they yeah. didn't work. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, there were no uh, foreign cars. I guess they were technically uh, working for the U.S. government, so they always had to rent American mm-hmm. cars. That would make sense, even though it was probably not really a consideration. Well, and at the time, I, I think those major American rental car companies just they kind of just had these fleets of that. Yeah. I don't remember you being able to like rent like a Camry in that early 90s. I guess you're right. Hey, did you see that that um, Saab 9000 Aero Turbo went for like 17 grand? What? I meant to send that to you to rub it in your face. <laughs> yeah. Because I sent to you and I said, that's pretty cool. It was like a red, not, it was like a, I want to say like a 98 or something like that. So it, wanted, it was the last year. No, although, yeah, no. <laughs> um, it was a 98 900 SE. I'm sorry, a 9000 Aero. It was cool. Like, it was pristine. It was red, manual. It was cool. You should love it. Even though it was, I forgot what um, GM platform it shared, but it was also a Lancia, I believe, mm. as well. But I didn't know that as a kid because I didn't know what um, a modern day Lancia was in the late nineties. So, did you? Uh, no. Yeah, I didn't know what an old school Lancia was when I was that young. I knew about the Stratos. Did you? Yeah. All right. Fine. I didn't. I didn't. Not until I was an adult. So, um, uh, second episode of the year, even though it is the. Month of March. Month of March, no. Uh, it is, in fact, the middle of January, so it's not that bad. We're going into a freeze here in Houston, like, this weekend. But I feel like a lot of the country is going into, like, a freeze. It's going to be, like, Snowmageddon in the Northeast yet again. Um, oh, is that so? 
I think so. Hmm. Isn't it? Yeah, it's like an Arctic thing. A little blast. Yeah. A little... It's an Arctic thing you wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I really would not. Um, but it's going to be like 25 here in Houston, which is astonishing. Yeah. I have to cover my plant outside. <laughs> How was your week, Kevin? Uh, it's fine. Yeah. Having this, I must confess, having this Paul Walker sticker on my Prius is really eating at me because of the shame. <laughs> Why did you put it on? <laughs> because I'm a huge fan of irony. Yeah. No disrespect to Paul Walker. The thing is that, like, I feel like irony is a two-way street in which people are required to realize that you are being ironic, and if not, then you're just that. But you it's... are a Paul Walker stick. You're a Paul Walker on a Prius <laughs> sticker. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, That's your identity to yeah. the majority of people. Yeah. Yeah. So explain what the sticker says. Actually, I don't even remember what oh it says. <laughs> um, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's a quote from Fast and Furious. It says, like, you you almost had, or a dude, I almost had you. And then it has his signature, and it says Paul Walker. And it has like an outline of an R thirty four skyline. Does <laughs> it say you never had me? <laughs> it does. No, yep. I, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's, what was the uh, what was the quote even? I don't know. The quote was mm-hmm. uh, so he exit. He gets out of the street race, mm-hmm. and he, he gets out of his car mm-hmm. and he approaches Vin Diesel. Mm-hmm. This is before their pals. Yep, and he's like, "Dude, I almost had you." And Vin Diesel says. You almost had me. You never had me. You never had your car. <laughs> and then... Uh, you remember this very distinctly. You lied. You're like, I don't know what the quote was. No, but I couldn't remember because there's multiple quotes. So the, the, the good one, the best one... So I have to explain. My sister bought me this sticker. Yeah. Uh, and I said, if you... Like, I said, I should put the sticker on the car. If you get me a sticker, I'll do it. And she did. And then and I am now good on my word. Now you're obligated. Yeah. I'm obligated. So yeah. uh, the, the the funniest one is there's a quote where he says, or there's a quote where it's like, uh, if I die from speed, know that I died smiling. Oh or if, if speed kills me, know that I died smiling. Paul Walker. In the years. But the thing is, yeah. I've looked into this. He never said that. <gasps> what? His character never said that. It's just it was created by sticker oh companies. Oh my god! How like terrible! <laughs> it is. It is. Everything about it is. Oh yeah. No, like all of that. I mean, like everything. All Look at the sticker on your car. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> this is awful. Yeah. yeah. Oh my much. god. But it is lovely that it is on a second gen Prius. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's right near that. Larger spoiler that's on the touring model. It, it, yeah, Kevin has a touring model which has an extended <laughs> rear spoiler and a sport suspension, which is probably a lie. Probably. Yeah. And bigger rims because it yeah. has 16s. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you feel that. Yeah. Over every bump. Yep. Which I don't slow down for. Nope. 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 Because you have like a New York taxi car. Pretty much. Yeah. You just plow through everything. So what did you want to say about Mazda logos? Oh, my God. Well, way to transition into yeah. things. Um, no, just that, like, Mazda... Okay, so I was just noting something, because I did this, like, weird... I went down this rabbit hole this week about the Mazda MPV, mm-hmm. and... Um, Which we talked about last week. No, actually, we didn't. Oh, we did. We did in a little the, bit. In the New for 88 segment. New for 88, but... And we didn't add, though, that because I just found out about this this week when I was reading through, like, the Wikipedia entry that, like, it had, like, um, it had, like, a true four-wheel drive. Like, you could lock it. Like, it was <laughs> an SUV by all accounts. And, of course, when I Googled it, like, this was extensively covered in, like, col- car culture, like, posts, like, two years ago. But... Uh, that's so cool. And I actually liked how the MPV looks and the idea of it because it's, it's kind of like a pre-Odyssey Odyssey where like it had like regular doors instead of sliding doors. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. So it had like three doors at first and it was still a regular door, but it was three doors for some reason. And then they added a fourth in an update. And then, um, but did you know that the MPV 
carried all three of Mazda's logos. Whoa. It had the Mazda just spelled out, like with that kind of blocky type. Yes. And then it had the lava lamp. Oh, yes. And then it had the flying seagull, the M. The winged M. The winged M. The lava lamp. I've never heard that, but yeah. that's pretty good. It looks like a lava lamp. I, did, I, I never looked into why they changed it like three times within basically a decade-ish. Like, there must be a reason behind it. I mean, Mazda went through kind of a lot during that phase. Well, so the the lava lamp didn't really replace the blocky, because the blocky stayed on the back okay, of the yeah, cars. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. So it was but, just like an enhancement. The yeah. winged M was like a much more marketable symbol. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it debuted. Like, I remember it in the newspaper. Somehow, I used to always read the auto section, and I would it would be like, With Tim new, Spell. new logo, uh, and they would show it, and I'd be like, Oh, this is so cool. And I remember seeing it when they did when Cadillac did it. Yeah. One of its Cadillac's changed their logo like eleven times in my lifetime. Yeah. Well, it's just like a variation of the flag or the crest. Yeah. Yeah. The Mazda one, I remember reading about that in uh, Car and Driver when it came out. And I don't remember which model it debuted on. Uh I mean, I think it was all at once. Like I think it was the N B Miata. I guess so. So, like, it's just a, like a little, like an itty bitty one atop yeah. the grill. Uh, but you, yeah, there never was an NB with the lava lamp. Yeah, and there never was a an NA with the winged M. Yeah, there you go. So, but also, I think that coincided with like the LCI six two six. Yeah, which also got got the uh, winged M. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think you're right. Um, I feel like every, like, I think that was in 1998, and everything sort of, like, had an LCI that year. Everything had one, and it was terrible, because that's when they moved from, like, um, prismatic car glass, like, headlights to, like, the crystalline, like, clear ones. and But they were, like, the cars were designed to have, like, the prismatic glass, and then oh. they retrofitted... Those kind of crystalline. You mean like glass. fluted glass? Yeah, like fluted okay. glass. Yeah, and then they moved to like the clear lens with like the like crystallized like reflectors, the projectors inside yeah. and stuff, and you could see all the like detail. yeah. Because like sticking with Mazda, uh, I think the Millennia. So the Millennia had like it had a projector, but the rest of it was like that prismatic glass. And then I think for ninety eight or ninety nine, they went with like just clear. Like it was kind of you know what it looks like. It looks like uh, the current. Volvo XC90, if you don't spec out the Thor's hammer mm -hmm. LED lights, um, where it's just like, it looks like a pupilless eye. <laughs> and I cannot, like, I think at the time I probably thought, like, oh, cool, like, you know, everyone has these new headlights. Yeah. Um, but now that they're just like everywhere, like, the prismatic ones look better to me, mm -hmm. um, at least for that generation of car. For slight like clear ones, it's, you know, you just think about, like, when people have, um, you know, you've seen, like, 911s where people retrofit, like, H4 lookalikes, except that they are, like, clear lenses. Yeah. It looks bad. It's it needs good. to have, like, the kind of hate, like, the frosted look of the um, the uh, prismatic glass. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, I do remember, though, do you remember the first time you ever saw, uh, I don't even know what to call them. I call them, like, crystalline light, uh, like lights, but... Uh, These are all terms you made up. Prismatic I know. Prismatic glass, like no, I don't, one... no, prismatic is real. Okay. Um, but uh, I remember my like a cousin of mine bought a ninety brand new ninety two or ninety three Accord, and like it was the first car to have that style of headlight. So with a basically the um, plexi over like the exposed bulb. And then just kind of like crystallized reflector okay. in the back. Yeah. So that started in like the early 90s, I feel mm -hmm. like. And then other manufacturers didn't really adapt that until like much later, like in the late 90s, basically. Yeah. And yeah. then everyone had that. And then now, yeah, obviously it's standard. Well, it's not the standard because now we're moved on to, we've moved on to um, LEDs, which are very different, but... Every car from the late 90s to mid-2000s basically had that style of headlight. And I don't think it was for the best. What about, like, would you consider, like, the the good-looking Lexus ES to have that? 
Oh yeah, the ninety seven. That was pretty good. The ninety seven to two thousand and two, I think. Yeah, that, it worked for that, but I feel like it, it was also designed to have that mm-hmm. kind of look, maybe. Um, oh my god, I just spilled whiskey on myself. Oh my god. god. Um, yeah, no, actually, that that wouldn't I wouldn't say call that the best looking generation though. It was probably the most well put together. What generation. was the best? The one before that with the quad projectors. Yeah, but that's still, I thought that still had clear glass. It had clear glass, but it was like it was four projectors. Okay. It's different. Uh. <laughs> yeah. It, there were several cars. The J30, the Infinity J30 also had quad projectors. I can't even picture that. Projectors were such a premium yeah, like thing back then. It was just like it was like mystically luxurious for some reason to have like just this big chunk of glass. Uh, where you couldn't see the bulb. Mm-hmm. It was like basically a dilated bulb because it was just like enhanced by the projector. Mm-hmm. But uh, I actually miss having projector lights. None of my cars now have projectors. And I will say that um, they do project light well. Like <laughs> I miss having like, so the... Also, none of your cars have HID, which is no. probably what you're missing a lot also. I also miss <laughs> that. Like... I never thought that would be a thing where, like, I would miss that. But in all honesty, like, those were very good lights. Uh, and <laughs> going between, like, the Celsius, the 911, which barely has, like, forward projecting lights of any kind, reflecting okay. lights. And then the BMW, which has, like, the halogens, which are fine. But, like, it's just, like, it's just, and it's just a, a yellow cast that fades or gradates into like the horizon versus like projectors which has that cut off yeah and with xenons it's very nice and this is also the first time in a very long time that i haven't had like this is not like a thing that i need necessarily but i kind of miss seeing it a little bit but like moving headlights so headlights that follow you with the turn mm-hmm. i've never thought that that has improved my driving experience in any way but it's always just kind of neat like, I've never had an issue where, like, they fail. So, to me, they've never been technology that's, you know, extra technology that's just one more thing to break, which is what, like, the common complaint is for um, car curmudgeons. But mm-hmm. it was just always kind of neat to see, like, you just turn the wheel and, like, the lights swivel with. Um, I did have one problem my old E90, the 330i, where BMW, for some reason, uh, when they released the E90, they... Um, there was like a spring or a clip of some kind that held the projector bulbs or the projector lenses in place and, or the bulbs, maybe the HID bulbs. I don't remember what it was quite, but every time I went over a bump or any type of road imperfection, the lights, like the projected light would vibrate like, but a wow. lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's so weird. And it must've been annoying for, if you're driving uh, in front of me, but and I never got it fixed. And there was like a TSB, a service bulletin of some kind for it. Um, but it, for some reason, didn't apply to my car or something. Anyways, so that was really annoying. So the halogens don't have that problem with my current one. Oh, that's pretty good. Upgrade. Sure. Yeah. Um, but I refuse to be one of those people who retrofits Xenon into my non-Xenon car. Like, that's so dumb. Yeah, that's not good. It never looks right. No. And it just... I, don't even, I couldn't even... like. It's not even aspirational. It's just like a bad idea. It's just, yeah. who cares? It's not even, it's not better light. It's just like turning your high beams. You want the same effect, just turn your high beams and be that asshole. So, <laughs> um, anyways, so that's all I've got for the Mazda logo, which oh. I've deviated from yeah. quite extensively. Sure. There. Yes. Well, what about that other thing that you put on the list? Oh, yes, this thing. Um Oh, so I was listening to something, hearing someone complain about the 992. Is it, can you put up a picture of the rear of the 992? Because there was a couple of videos this week, of uh, some video reviews and stuff. So I saw like some footage of yellow Porsche 911 992 generation. Yeah, on the one that track. everyone's testing. Yeah, everyone's testing, and from the rear, it is very unique. And I so I heard some people complaining about uh, how this. Yeah, that's a great picture. Yeah. Um, of the spoiler up? No, no, no. The, the first one that you had. The one that I said was a great picture before you changed it. I don't know which one. that was. This okay. one? No, no, it was yellow. Same one. There, yeah, on the yeah. left. 
Oh, we'll cut this out. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, on the left of your screen there. Yes. Okay. All right. So, spoilers people, up. People were complaining about how, like, on that lower part under the exhausts and everything. That's color keyed? That's color keyed. Yeah. Um, I mentioned something about, like, a bother about this uh, rear valence design, but go on. Well, yeah, so I was of that mind. Yeah. And then I uh, come around. Hey, did you know before all these reviews started coming out that the handles were motorized? Yes. I didn't. I learned that today. Yeah, I did. That is astonishing. Dot, 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 Lee bad. Yeah. Like, anyways, um... I, I, I think I saw a tweet or something and I had like I just had to stop and then read it because I was I couldn't believe that they would do that because mm-hmm. it just there's no reason at all ever for any car while it's a spectacle like on a techie car like a Tesla mm-hmm. on a 911 and I'm not even like that much of a purist but like on the Model 3 are they motorized? No. Okay. It's um, Aston Martin style. You push on okay. one end and the, the other end pops out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Oh my God. Like, so that means that in the lightweight models, they're going to remove the motors and give you normal ones and charge you more for it or something. I mean, like, I'm sure it doesn't, it's like five pounds of motor maybe, but Mm -hmm. still that is astonishing. Anyways, go on. You were saying something. Oh, um, this rear valence design, I have come around to it because i think it is more it is definitely more of a deliberate vision and i was looking up close Mm. and it's like you couldn't there's not even a a scene where you would like oh i'm gonna like paint this or wrap the lower section black like there's not even a scene i mean i'm I'm not saying it's impossible but it's not like there's a clear break where you would wouldn't you just take it in like because right now basically uh the black part of the rear valence almost it wraps around so it wraps around are you looking at the are you highlighting the spoiler no, okay. actually, it's delayed on the our projected oh, okay. screen here. Our projected screen here. Oh. Um, but like, say here. So I'm pointing yes. at the actual corner where the the bumper turns. Yeah. If they cut it off here. They probably could have swung it down. Um, and no, I'm not saying what I'm not saying what not what they could have done, but what like if an owner were to oh. want to like modify it. There's not yeah. a clean break. But no. I'm saying this is very purposeful. But the reason I'm a fan yes. now. On. is because every like supercar everything in this class they're all like mid-engine or front engine they have like this big diffuser yeah. and they have a back that is like the suggestion of a bigger diffuser than is there so it's like there's always like this black section upward reaching the fact that yeah. this the like this is a car that cannot have a diffuser no because it's rear engine and this is like this makes it a 911 this makes it look more like a 911 to me the fact that this is the only car in its class where you would have this like non-diffuser rear yeah i feel like it's accentuating that it is not every other competitor you know because I it doesn't have a diffuser i see from a design perspective why they added this massive kind of like proportionally speaking massive valence black valence uh so are you saying you don't like the black valence, or you? I, I mean, are you saying you don't like the body colored bit underneath it? Uh, I wasn't a fan of like just how they treated the rear end below the lights, mm-hmm. um, for a few reasons. But one, just that the I am not a huge fan. I think it looks nice. Maybe the embedded uh, exhaust tips, where instead of it hanging kind of like partially out of the rear valence. These are like now embedded. Yeah. And it works well in a singular application, but if you ever change the exhaust, like I imagine that becomes a challenge of some kind. Uh, but for me, it just seems so orchestrated. Like it's, I don't know, there was something kind of like nice about the fact that the old ones like hung below the rear valence mm-hmm. because like it just like, I don't know, it seemed a little bit more real raw i mean like i don't know what the right word is for that but here these are just like so integrated and designed like it's just a style almost more than it is a piece of functionality and the other thing is like i notice now just looking at this photo just kind of squinting a little bit that there's a lot of rear bumper and the taillights are so like thin now 
yeah. that if you didn't have that large black portion, like blacked out part of the rear valence, it would kind of look a little ridiculous with yeah. as much rear valence. Uh, yeah. Or if there were more colored keyed bits to it. So it needs that black portion to mm-hmm. balance off the height, like bring down the height, basically. Um, so it, my long story short, like, I'm fine. It's fine, I guess. Like, I don't feel... Everything above that, I think, looks really good. Everything below that, I'm kind of ambivalent. Like, I don't think it's good or bad. It's just kind of a sign of the modern, like, design language that cars are taking on now. Okay, so it's funny because in video, in motion, yeah. I do like the taillights, but in motion, it um, didn't. It wasn't really crazy working for me. Yeah, because it almost because of how, like, it almost looks like <laughs> it almost looks like you're like pulling on the skin of like an obese person with string. Oh, that's what the taillights look like. It almost looks like the bumper kind of bulges out underneath the taillight, like it's like a muffin top situation. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, For... I mean, and that's not something I got from pictures, but just like seeing it in video and seeing yeah. it in motion, especially in yellow. I think yellow doesn't work for it. That picture doesn't really show it, but when you see it as it's like rotating it around, I, it's you know what it is too. It's it's so three D, like it wraps around the car so much. Uh, and this is actually this is like a rendering. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Let's bring up a real photo of the real rear end. We're probably going to cut this out because this is kind of terrible. Yeah. We're, we're describing yet again. Like our podcast is so like visually oriented. Um, hang on. Let's see. Oh, it's the Chris Harris one. So this was actually, I think the tweet was a Chris Harris video yes. where the, the handles did not work. So this is what you're talking about? Yes. Because of course he's sliding around a track. So you will get a proper view of the rear end yeah let's let's not do this. <laughs> no 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 it's really but i'm gonna go ahead and i want to watch this part here sorry yeah we're just silent there for a second he's talking about how like the handle is not working because it is motorized now so it depends on like how you're looking at it like here it does look like a very future 911 mm-hmm. um but it's fine i don't I don't dislike the 92. I like the way it looks, honestly. Like, I think I it's too. a really nice execution, yeah, of the design language. Like, even though it's very, very big looking now, and I would honestly prefer a 997 as far as a modern take on a 911 goes. 991 looks really good, too, but that's where it, honestly, like, it, I don't recall the exact um, differences in track, but... Uh, the 991 just looks, even just a regular narrow body C2 looks so much wider than a 997 for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And I, the, while the wide ones do look amazing, like there's still kind of that natural look of a narrow C2 where I kind of gauge like how good a 911 looks based off of that because like the majority of them are not wide. Although now they're yeah, all they're wide, wide, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I think it's a different car for me. Like, this is not a car that I ever see in my future. Like, mm-hmm. if I ever, if there were, I think we talked about this before, like, what would be the last generation of 911 that I'd ever buy? And it's probably never going to be, like, anything past a 997. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe if there were, I don't know if I'd ever get a 991. Like, it's just, there's something about it that, um, it's just too, it's too refined, like in experience in driving and also in in appearance at that, like it looks like a luxury car. But maybe me. after like two more generations of nine eleven, that's true. Yeah, see, let's see like, how oh, like it was the raw one. Let's see how. Yeah, I like that. That's hit the problem is that it's too refined. Like, let's see how refined and good it gets because I don't want that. Because <laughs> uh, this, like, I haven't. I actually have not really consumed any of the reviews uh, that have come out. Uh, for this car and i'm sure it's amazing like yeah i'm sure yeah like there's no way that it isn't so um yeah there you go that's that yeah that was that yeah i'm sorry i'm I'm drawing to a close your your topic here did you have any auction fodder auction fodder you say (laughs) um yeah i so i kind of like i was just looking at bad auctions today and no actually (laughs) i'm unprepared for this because i 
I actually did not. I was just scanning through and I saw some interesting things that were kind of... <laughs> 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 the first thing, of course, that uh, pops up is like the prancing horse What's sculpture. That at, it's at 25, 2458 right now. 100. 2400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For, with four days left to go. It's a, it's a huge ass sculpture of the Ferrari prancing horse if you should ever find that your home is lacking such a thing. There have been a lot of E36 M3s that have been popping up on Bat lately. There have, yeah. I have high interest in them right now, so um, it's interesting watching them come and go. They've been going for exactly what I, I think I thought they were going to go for, except for that Techno Violet one that ended up going for 17, maybe more than that. I just saw the mm-hmm. hour before alert you know what i hate like i saw there was like a perfect carrera that popped up today like a g50 in 80 oh. <laughs> i just How stopped randomly on like the latest auction that they posted which is a 94 uh chevy silverado ck 2500 six and a half liter turbo diesel four by four and no reserve of course and it's not even like i was i was like uh looking at the headline to see like oh maybe it's at like twelve thousand miles no it's not no, it's just a, it's just a regular old. That's interesting that they like, you can find this. that on every corner here in Texas. Honestly, yeah, this is an interesting. I mean, I guess is it because it's the turbo diesel? I mean, I guess that's uncommon, as far as I know. Um, oh, here you go. There's a your car liveried. Uh, oh no, it's not. No, that's a no. Rumos oh livery. yeah, yeah. From a distance, I thought it was the Martini. Did you see Magnus Walker posted a video of like a. I I don't know. It was at his shop. I don't know if it's his car, but it was like a 944. You know, we've seen the 924 Martini. Yeah. It was a 944 with like an added wide body over the 944 with that Martini. It was really cool. Oh, interesting. Because it really flares out. No, I did not see that at all. That's interesting. Oh, there it is. There is the, uh, the intrigue. OSV. What's it at? It is at three thousand dollars <laughs> with three days left to go. It is the Oldsmobile Special Vehicles, um, Special T Vehicles. Yeah, edition. I, saw, I saw this and I was like, man. Like, first of all, it's so sad because this was like two years before they pulled the plug on Oldsmobile. Yeah, and they were like, I really so OSV was this division. Yeah, God, that interior is bad. It but is can you imagine? Very bad. Olds, like, can you imagine? There's probably like OSV like polo shirts. Oh and yeah, hats, you know, for this like you imagine that no like, one's ever heard of. Oldsmobile aficionados fans were like, "Yeah, Brent's not dead. What are people look at yeah. this? Yeah, there's hope yet." Where they they made, I guess it was the volume seller, so that's why they decided to like specialize this particular car. Well, and it was like probably the smallest thing Oldsmobile made at that time. No, oh, I think it was the Alero. So it was the Alara. I forget what that was based. But this was trying on. to capture like the like tuner car craze. Yeah, that's, that's such a weird proposition. You that, just said that, but I mean, like, yeah, that's probably no, what they were doing. G, but that, no, but that's GM. Like, that's what GM does oh is they do these God. like horrible attempts at like capturing the youth with like the shit they have in their closets. The youth, yeah. But like with Oldmobile, like that's so funny. Is that what um, Buick is trying to do now, which is to revitalize? interest with people that never like that weren't that never viewed buick as a uh, like a prestige brand like because they have interest they kind of i mean like you know gm's kind of passing down some interesting cars there like the um active tour x Mm -hmm. is cool yeah uh what else is cool in the buick lineup i don't know i saw i don't think they make the regal like gs anymore but I saw one today, and I was like, oh, that oh, does yeah. look cool. Those, you know what? That looked like nice and aggressive, even though like it was probably not that good of a car. Hey, <laughs> probably the finest cruise you can buy. But you know what? I actually remember when the Regal, like in the 2000s, I think a, a friend in college had a Regal GS. Like It was the performance model. Wow. But I don't really remember what was performance about it. Like I know very little about it. Oh, here, here's a local car. From driver source, the 75 uh, Carrera Coupe, it's a 2.7. Uh, wait, this is a regular 2.7? I think uh, so. Yeah, maybe so. Looks good in that color. 
It does. Like, yeah, I love the gold fuchs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks good. What is it? It's bitter chocolate. Oh, yeah. Bitter chocolate. I. That's a really good color. Um, it's kind of like a flat brown, poo brown, if you will. It's like the uh, 914 we set it. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, I was about to say that there's like an 88 Carrera that popped up, mate. Even if you plan on buying the car, even if you plan on, at the very end, like, plopping down a chunk, why would you bid high at the beginning? It's like oh, yeah. you discovered eBay for the first time, and you're like, no, 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 I'm going to, like, I'm going to go all in at first and see what <laughs> happens. So, like, it's the first day of this, like, it's beautiful. It's a paint sample, like, blue. I don't know what the actual blue is, but, uh, but yeah, someone, like, first minute bid 39 grand on it, and it's obviously going to go up from there because it's, like, a low mileage example and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but way to, like, ruin the drama yeah. <laughs> and interest of the site by just, like, killing the auction way at the beginning. So there you have it. Uh, that Fiat Multipla is kind of cool. It is. Yeah. It's always like, it's always like the same cross section, but in a good way. There's a, what is this? Do you know what this is? Don't even look, I'm about, I'm covering my laptop, but I forget that it's <laughs> like projected on the TV in front of you. Like, what is this? Do you, do you know what the difference between a Model A and a Model, what is another different Ford from the 1920s? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Look at that. Is this three on the tree? No, it's actually on the floor. I don't know anything about these cars. Uh, what would you say is like the basement for car knowledge for you as far as like, what do you think is the last car that you could actually speak to? <laughs> um, Age of all I mean, definitely 60s, maybe 50s, but probably 60s. Yeah, I think same. Early 60s. Yeah, there might be like, a couple of cars like pre that yeah. where I could like there's like a little bit of knowledge on um, to the next. I had a short uh complaint <laughs> about Go. yes. Um so I'm not I'm not a Jimny skeptic, of course. Oh, no. As you would be, are you, you gonna be a contrarian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as you would say, you you believe that the Jimny is like the only SUV the only true SUV. And yeah. In our circle, like, it's just funny because, like... It, Go on. I don't know. There's not a way I can say this. It doesn't make me sound, like, really stupid. It's too late. I know that the Renegade is not at all like the Jimny, but it's, like, if there was a super stripped-down Jeep Renegade, I feel like it would be kind of cool. Maybe. But I feel like the people that... Why, that, why do you think it would be cool? Because I think it's... Isn't it car-based? They're all car based. I mean, yeah, maybe that except for the Wrangler. But they actually do have real off road chops because they have to. Like as far as being able to go off road and stuff, do every you... Jeep that's trail rated can actually do the shit. Is the Renegade trail rated? I yes, guess it is. Yeah. It is. Okay, no, that's actually, what I'm I'll, go, you. I'll go back. On, I'll, oof, I'll go back on that. The Renegade is cool. Okay, like, if you had a really stripped down one on like Steelys and stuff, yeah, still no, because I think it's too nice. Like there's something about the Jimny that's even more basic than like a Renegade. And I don't know, maybe it's because it's two-door, first of all, and that, like, it's, like, just so, like, old. Like, it's not even, like, refined. The body-on-frame thing, it's just, like, such an old-school thing. It's so utilitarian. It's really, it is designed first to go, like, off-road and be durable versus, like, I think the Renegade is probably slightly comfort-oriented. But I agree that you could probably, like, uh, decontent a Renegade and make it like a kind of a cool like basic yeah. like, off roader of some kind. But... It would be cool if they offered something like that. I've yeah. been I just, thinking how uh, I wish they hadn't designed it like first as basically like the entry level like comfort Jeep, like as opposed to it being like, hey, you might also like this. It just happens to be our cheapest model, um, but it just happens to be like a very basic cool like truck mm -hmm. i don't know anything about it though is it is it body on frame is it unibody i have no idea i that to me it does make a difference like um yes we established i know that. but it does make a difference like as far as like when you're when you're calling something an suv mm -hmm. like nowadays that's just kind of like uh, that doesn't mean anything okay, i'm not using SUV. the term it's too late i'm just putting the thoughts out here go on that's all go i on. 
uh, I think yes. it would be cool if someone did something really like stripped down. It, I mean, I mean, I'm now I'm at the point where like any segment of car, any class of car, if they someone did something really stripped down and and enthusiast minded and basic, that would be very cool. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for someone. I agree. Some oh. company yeah. needs to look like. To look at what Porsche has done with the GT4 and yeah. they're not, you know, in the 911 GT3 Touring, and say, how can we do that on a, you know, a different level? Yeah. How can we create this buzz around the enthusiast version at a yeah. different level? And yeah. I don't know, like, I don't think that we've tapped out of that. I think there is, there is like a potential for someone to do something cool. Yeah, uh, and we just haven't seen it. I agree. Um. You know, on the opposite side of that, um, BMW company that no, hates its customers. Oh God, yeah, no kidding. That's a whole other thing. But you know how I've been helping a friend find like a cheap car, like a car under five thousand dollars, and this friend is not a car enthusiast by any means, but does have like as I'm kind of feeling him out in terms of like what it is that he's looking for, because he's been a little bit particular about it, and that's fine. Um, but is if I could boil it down, what it seems to be is that. He's looking for a car that has some sort of personality that's projected, like, in terms of the brand, like, there, it instills some sort of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be for, like, the mechanics of the car or how it drives, but, like, that he can see that there's a community around it, and he kind of enjoys, like, seeing that. So he doesn't want, he doesn't want, like, he doesn't want necessarily, like, the most reliable car on the world. He's not looking for, like, a Civic or a Camry or et cetera. And um, our friend David is like hardcore trying to push him to buy an element. And while there <laughs> might be enthusiasts around the element, I feel like it is uh, beyond his age group <laughs> uh, as far as that goes. So he kind of has been turning to Jeep for that. And Jeep, I will say, uh, there is like an enthusiasm about what those vehicles are. And it may not necessarily be like that they are good off roaders or base like bases for an off road build of any kind, like but they have there's like a cachet about it. It's a basic car. They, I mean he's looking at a Cherokee right now. And I won't lie, like I did send him a few and I thought mm -hmm. actually this all started because I sent him a, an Isuzu Amigo. Yeah. And I thought that was actually kind of a cool choice. It is a cool choice. Yeah, it's rare, and it's like it's just like, uh, and honestly, if there were a time where like a convertible short wheelbase SUV <laughs> was made fun of, now it's kind of cool again. Totally. So, uh, I was so on board with them getting it, and the one that we were looking at like got sold, unfortunately, and they are rare. Like we cannot find another one. Oh. So, um, so now it's kind of on the Jeeps, two door Jeeps, uh, Jeep Cherokees, I should say. Cherokees? Yeah. That's cool. We already know someone that has one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the one he was looking to buy because that person is now looking to buy the four liter because he's um, he's currently got the four cylinder. Oh. Yeah. So he wants that four liter inline six okay. for to have a little more go. Okay. Yeah. But even him, like, he's not a car person either. And uh, he's found this kind of like, <sighs> he's not a Jeep person, thank God. <laughs> Uh, but like he does find like that he is there's an enthusiasm for himself like about this car like it's unique yeah like and like people care about it and because it's a capable car and his is very basic but uh, I don't know there's just like there is something about that so this is the opposite end is what I mean by the opposite end of that spectrum I suppose mm -hmm. um, is being able to instill like the spirit of enthusiasm. But I don't think it's the opposite. I think it's the same. Oh, it's the same. But I should say, like, this opposite end of, like, the purchasing spectrum. Well, yeah, but I'm yeah. not talking about all ends. But, sure, I mean, sure, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like on the, like, the new car side, like, I'm looking for anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, for anything towards, like, basic, back to basic. Like, Well, anything. yeah, because every car is the same now and that every car is good now. Yeah. But, like, that means that it, they're all, like, numb momentum like it's just like all it is just like it gets you going and that's about it like um they don't do anything different now they yeah. all i mean obviously 
like I will say like the meat of cars in hell, like everything in between all the extremes do the same thing basically. So that's kind of unfortunate, but a also kind of like a reality of progress. I mean, now that like technology and good engineering is so accessible, of course you're going to make every car good. Um, but at the same time, it's at the expense of like personality. So yeah, I mean, look at, <laughs> look at, I don't know, look at all cars now, I suppose. I mean, we've been harping on BMW lately, but that's only because of the grills. <laughs> uh, can you imagine when people start blacking those out? Like, I, I can, I photoshopped it. The vo- <laughs> of the, did you do the new seven? Yeah. Did you? I didn't see that. Oh yeah, it was like last week when it leaked before it was before it was official. I even though it's now so like uh, overdone and uh, a little bit trite to make fun of the big grill and the seven and well, all be uh, X seven and the seven series and all future mm-hmm. BMWs basically at this point. Uh, but I couldn't help but chuckle every time someone found a way to like <laughs> make it relatively bigger. And I don't know if Daniel made that or if he. Uh, found it but it was where like it was the earth and like, yeah the entire united states was covered by a grill <laughs> uh but it, it's bad it is bad <laughs> very bad and the uh frustrating thing is reading through comments and saying like well if it wasn't chrome it wouldn't be so bad but can you imagine the void you can because you photoshopped it and yeah. now you didn't see it but like the void created by like no grill yeah would be terrible yeah did you see that thing that i posted I sent you a picture of an E thirty eight seven series. Oh no, it was a, it was from my thread because I we were at Dan, like our like one of our group chats. Oh, the wagon. About, no, 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 no. Okay. Uh, but our group chat was talking about E thirty eights, and I sent like one, and like I'm like vaguely intrigued by it. I don't think I would ever do it because uh, I know Daniel believes in his E thirty eight, but I feel like any E thirty eight I would buy would be like a nightmare. It'd be just like <laughs> the lemon. <laughs> car and it's because you already have a big luxo barge i know I, if i bought one of those it'd probably be a replacement for that other car the celsius uh oh. i know well i still have it it's still here um anyways but it was just like i googled um common e38 issues 740i issues and it would have been a shorty sporty or a shorty 40 whichever one you prefer uh, and one of them was kidney grills fell out, <laughs> and I suggested that perhaps it was just blacked out, and the new owner <laughs> didn't notice because that's what they look like when they're blacked out. It is. Yeah, it's bad. Please, people, a little chrome is fine. Yeah. It's iconic. It's the badge it's, of the car. It is. So please stop blacking them out. <laughs> it is not a good look. Um, even though Daniel will argue that it comes from the factory that way. And I guess it does. It does. Yeah. The factory does a lot of reprehensible yeah. things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what else we got? Oh, we have our new segment. New for 88. New for 88. Except That's that this year. year, it's new for... 98. 98. That's what I meant. Yeah. 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 Last year was 88. Last time or was 88. Last, last year. Last, last uh, ep was 88. This ep is 98. So... This is our new segment in which we choose a year and discuss the cars and we, and we, that came out. And we pick one to drive once, daily, and crush. Yes, so it's an FMK exactly. take. And so I, I kind of liked, I kind of want to read through what I have, my selections, and then we can go through all the cars. Okay. Um, go. Well, I think you'll be very surprised. I don't think I will be. I think you will. I think you will. Um, So, yes. <laughs> all right. My drive once. There was some obvious choices, so I tried not to choose an obvious choice. Yes. The Mitsuoka MC-1. Okay, wait. I thought there was going to be cars that, like, we knew. <laughs> no, this is anything you introduced in the year is up for grabs. Okay, go on. So, this is a car that looks... It has fabric doors and it looks kind of like the peel p50 that jeremy clarkson drove and it would just be it would be fun to drive once okay uh it would yeah. be a very totally unique experience it was a eight horsepower car uh introduced in the year 1998 is it in this list it's on the list it's yeah the let me just click on it uh there it is 
the NC-1. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> Isn't that great? It looks like... It doesn't even look like a key car. It's a one... It, it looks like you're one standing passenger, up in it. It's a one-passenger car. It's amazing. Wouldn't you want to drive that once? Part of the description, it lacks many items a normal car would have. Yeah, like horsepower. Yeah, that's part of the description. I What is 385,000 yen? Uh, $35. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, so this is the drive once. You really want to drive? It just looks like a... Uh, I'm going to drive it once. It looks like a golf cart, but yeah. less practical. I'm going to drive it once. The golf cart has at least two seats. I'm going to drive it once. Yes, I could choose a CLK GTR, and that's probably what I would choose, but... This okay. This is, is literally a golf cart. Look at this. Do you see it? It has like a. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I do. Okay. Um. Okay. What I would daily. Yes. Audi TT. Mm, I, I love those coming. TTs. I saw that coming. Yeah, you okay. did. Oh come First on! You gen, thought I could have you... picked? I could have picked a great BMW. Nah, you'd never. Really? You, you might pick the Honda Le Great. The Le Great is great. I don't even know what that is. That's it's... the van I was talking about. That's oh, the Odyssey. It's, the, it's literally the. Second gen Odyssey, and it's called yeah. the La Great. Yes. All one word, Cap G. <laughs> yes, great as in good or great. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, and so the TT, I I do love the first TT because it was the coupe yeah. uh, and the convertible. Both it, were great. I hated obviously, it when it came out, and now uh, I like it. Well, obviously, it's the best TT ever designed yep. visually. Yeah. Um, Audis aren't performance cars. Yes. Uh, so this was great. Okay. Um, Fair enough. And kill uh, has to be the Escalade. Fuck the Escalade. Mm, yeah, that's uh, a bad one. Yes. Awful. You saw that one coming too? Yeah. yeah no, yeah. you didn't even look at the list. But I the Escalade, the now. everyone that is driving an Escalade at any given time is yeah. an asshole. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's There's never been one good Escalade owner. <laughs> but the 1998 Escalade was the first one. The first, like, the ultimate badge engineering. The yeah. ultimate just, like, GM. Like, we can, we can change this. And charge them this much money. I honestly and people thought people will buy it. And you're gonna go for the Toyota Camry Solara. I considered it. Daily. I, yeah. uh, as a daily. As a daily. No, that would be disrespecting no. the coupe. Oh dear. <laughs> if, that was a consideration for Crush. Okay. All right. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I've got one for the Crush, but go on. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I saw notable mentions I had was the Bentley Arnage. Yep. Uh, okay. Wait, before you go through these, because I have to pick mine, because I was actually going to say... Okay, well, here's let's, the you, thing, you pick yours. Because yeah. I would drive once the Bentley Arnage. Yeah, because that, was consider- that was a run-up for me. I would never want to drive it again, because it's probably not, like, a, an experience that I would want to repeat. Not in a bad way, it's just like, it probably just drives fine. Yeah, it's very nice. Yes. It's very nice. Uh, the Mary car, the daily car. Yes. Uh, ooh, you know, this is too obvious. I'm going to go with 996. Because that's the yeah. car, like, it's just everything I'd ever want in a car. I this consider era. it, yeah. So, but the kill, the crush, it would be <laughs> the Jaguar S-Type. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a bad car. <laughs> it's a bad car that I did, there was a time when I thought that the uh, S-Type R was kind of cool because it's like, it was like the good version of the bad car, but... Now, I just, it's a bad car. Like, there's nothing redeeming about it. This no. is your Thunderbird, new G-Wagon. Yeah. Like, kind of, like, this retro car. Right. That just doesn't make sense style-wise. And what was it? It was a Ford, too. What is the, I don't let's see here. I know it's shared engines with the Contour. The Lincoln LS. The Lincoln LS. And the Ford Thunderbird. Lincoln LS and the Ford Thunderbird, yeah. which I was just reading about the Lincoln LS because I was reading about the other day on Wikipedia about, um, do you remember the T-150? Uh, no. Toyota? So, oh, the T-150, Toyota, the truck. Yeah, the, the truck. truck. Yeah, Toyota yeah, yeah, wanted to call, we were talking about this, Toyota yeah, yeah, wanted yeah. to call it the T-150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ford said no. Yeah. And then Toyota was like, well, you can't call the Lincoln LS the LS6 and LS8, which is what they wanted I remember to do. That. Yeah, I remember reading that in Car and Driver, and I was like, hey, that's actually a really nice naming convention. Because, like, you're combining the name of the car with the actual, like, yeah. uh, number of cylinders. Now it would be the LS4. Yeah. Oh, for look. every car. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so now that I've selected my things, um, I noticed that you didn't comment on how I didn't choose the Saab 9.3 for anything. I didn't want to acknowledge Saab yeah. in any way. If, I'll tell you what. 
for daily if it wasn't going to be the 996, it would have been the Sovereign 93. So, all right, let's go through this. Well, in that case, we'd have Drive Once, Daily, Crush, and Loner Car. Broken down. <laughs> loner, what, what would you read a loner for when your daily is broken? Yeah, that'll, yeah, we'll go for the 996 there. Look at this. What is the... I don't know what this is. What is the Ascari? Oh, the Ascari, of course. Um, okay, let's go to this list here. Yeah. Okay, so anything we don't know, we don't have an interest in. I clicked on some of those Chevrolets, and they were all yeah. bad. They are so, basically day woos. E46 came out. E46 came Look at out. That. Iconic. Came out in 98. M Roadster. M Roadster came out in 98. Iconic. Great yeah. car. Yep. Uh, C5R. That's the just the race car. Yeah, okay. I'm not so, familiar with that. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I could have picked the 911 GT198, which is my favorite ever race car. Yeah, that's but, a cool car. Um, especially because you could actually... Like, get one. Um, CLK GTR, one of the coolest cars ever. Yeah, yeah. The Spark came out? In, oh, this is... The, it's an old one. It's the old one. It's not the one... I thought it was a Q. Honestly, I thought it was a Q. S-P-A-R-Q. Look at this, like, front end. I, I know, It's kind of cool. Ooh, look at that Pontiac version. Yeah. I told you that we were driving, and Laura saw it, and she was like... She was driving, and she was like... Ah. Out of the way, and she reads the name of the spark, and she reads it Squint. as spank. spark spank. <laughs> no way, spank. Which was like it seems like it's something that you would say like if you were like an office bully, and yeah. you're just like, "What's your spank?" Was it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oldsmobile okay. Arrow. Oh wait, go back here. Hmm. I actually thought the 300M was kind of cool. Like uh, that was um, oh, while we're on the. Past, past, past subject. Mm. Motor Trend Car of the Year, 1998. 300M was the car of the year. Really? Oh, and, and they that div- sounds familiar, actually. They divided up Car of the Year and Import Car of the Year. Whoa. I think the 98 was also the... I think the Import Car of the Year was either the Beetle or the Lexus GS. Oh, really? I'm, I might be off a year. Okay, that makes sense, though, because the GS did come out. Oh, yeah, let's see. Nope, GS came out in 90, oh, 93, because it was the curious. No, no, but, that, but the gone. LCI. The oh, LCI yeah, yeah, with yeah, the V8. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the one that people really liked. Yeah. Uh, wait, let's continue on here. None of the Ds. I am familiar with the Daewoo Oh, the Daewoo Matisse. Matisse. The Dahatsu Sirion. Oh, the the Ford, Dahatsu Storia. The Ford Cougar. Oh, the For, Fiat Multipla came out then. And that's iconic. It is. But yeah. it is the, not that generation though, was it? Yeah, it was this. Was it? Let's see here. Was it? Oh, maybe not. What is the. Because Wikipedia always displays the latest gen, which would be like that weird, like two layered cake. Yeah. Like style with a, a lot of a lot of round lights going on. But I guess maybe not. Maybe this was the, the first Multipla. Uh, oh, no, it's not. This is the later one. So that means that this is the first one. Okay. That's All right. Cool. The weird one is the first one. Very cool. Yeah. They made it kind of like they've dumbed it down a little bit. That's too bad. Um, the Ford first generation Cougar, Focus was a great car. The Ford Cougar, which was the Mercury Cougar. Yes. Which was kind of cool when it came out. Cause it, was an, it, was, it wasn't Australian, was it? It was... No, uh, it was mediocre. It, honestly, I mean, I thought when it came out, I, now I don't think it's cool. But like when it came out, it was so different because it yeah. seemed so European, much like... The Focus, because that was the Euro, yeah. it was a Euro car, basically, and it was so different, because all the switch gear was nice, and like, yeah. it looked nice, and I had a friend who, uh, her first car was a, like, top of the line Focus, and it had, like... The hatchback it, or the sedan? Sedan. Uh, I know, too bad, but, uh, but it was really nice on the inside, like, I was so surprised that a compact car at that time could be so nice, and now compact cars are very nice, like, mm-hmm. just in general, like, uh, but... Back then, like, you know, it had leather. It was just fully, like, kitted out. And I was like, wow. Like, this does not feel like any... Okay. All right. Can we just kick the studio? <laughs> um, but this Cougar uh, was in line with that, too. Just, like, it was just so different. Like, it it had, like... Uh, I think it was just that it didn't share any components with the American market versions. Like, or like the American market the drive cars, except for the engines. But just the experience of sitting is like, I'm sure they were not like anything ex- uh, like special to drive. But um, just the user experience of when you're buying a car like this. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, so the Ford Cougar 
or Ford Cougar. <laughs> not to be conf- oh no, I'm sorry. Wikipedia is saying not to be confused with the Ford Cougar. Oh, that was like their K-U-G-A. small SUV that looked very cool in the yeah. beginning. I like that they had to clarify that it's not the Cougar, but it's the Cougar. <laughs> oh, the Falcon, which was not good. Again, that's, well, that's another thing where there's like 19 generations of yeah. it. It was, the oh, Australian, wow. it was an Australian V8 rear-wheel drive car. Literally, there was never a good-looking generation, but they were kind except of for cool. the original it one. It was like the SS. Look at this. They had a pickup version that looks very bad. Yeah. What? Look at this. Why is there even a rear window for that? That's very not good. Uh, so, but they don't even display the original Falcon. Okay, let's... Like the 60s one. Okay, Ford Focus, we just talked about that. Very good. First gen. The Holden Suburban, when we plagued Australia (laughs) with (laughs) our, like, man car. Really great, we just talked about. The Isata Franchifini T8 and T12. Do you know what that is? Neither is Wikipedia. Nope. There's no picture picture. here, so... Um, uh, what about the IBM C12? What is uh, that? No, I don't know if we do the. Look at this. No picture either. Yeah. Okay. So we're not even gonna dig into S-type. it. S type. The Grand Ooh, Cherokee. This is the, the ugly the bad one. one. The, the bad, bad one. one. Yeah. The... This is the first. So it was the second gen Grand Cherokee where they basically just inflated the first design. Yep. So it, it just became slightly curved. And they pretty much, they all had body-colored cladding, yeah. which oh, was the so worst bad. part of the first generation. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is so when Kia was still bad. Lexus IS, good car. Good car. Oh, yeah. Lexus IS came over. Lexus RX. And do you remember, like, uh, I think I remember the first car and driver review with the IS and like without irony, because nowadays if you stick your fist through like an exhaust pipe, there's just too much double entendre. But <laughs> I remember they were like, it's fist size, <laughs> uh, the exhaust on that. And yeah, the first RX, which was a good car. And obviously a very influential car. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, and it was the Toyota Harrier and it was imported over here. And I remember the car and driver announcement photos for that car was the Toyota Harrier. Um, so it had like these side mounted mirrors and et cetera. I was like, Whoa, this is, like, oh, what is going on? Cause cool. I had no concept of like Japanese domestic market cars at that time. What is that Mazda? The Sentia? I don't know. Whoa. It was a luxury rear wheel drive car and I'm completely like, unfamiliar with what, Oh, it's a it's predecessor like a, to the 99. No, or a successor. Is it successor? Oh yeah. 91 to 2002. Oh no, wait. I guess, yeah, the, the, the one they show in the profile photo of the Wikipedia entry is always the last one. So it's a predecessor to the... No, oh, or a forerunner. Wait. Successor. Successor, sorry. Successor to the... Uh, yeah, you're right. Wow. How it really int- turned boring. Look at oh, that. Oh, yeah. Jesus. It's like, like a Buick. Yeah. The 929 was like this nice, luxurious, like weird 90s curvy thing, and then... It turned into this, which looks like a Kia X. It really looks like the XG300. XG300. I saw one the other day. Wait, is it a Kia or is it a Hyundai? It was the Kia. Was it? Okay. Or no, it was the Hyundai XG300. Yeah. Um, the W220 was a 98. Was it? That's what it says. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I can't believe that. Okay. I always thought of it as newer. No, I used to, yeah, no, that makes sense. It was the it 98. Does. Yeah, because at least I, in my head, for some reason, I think 99 is like so many years ahead of 98, but it, yeah, in fact, is not. Um, okay, let's see what else. The cube, the original cube. Let's see what the original cube looked like. I looked at that earlier. Oh, and that's way cooler than the current cube. Yeah. Because it is actually a cube. Uh, okay, the Alero came out. Yeah. What a revolutionary old meal that was. Um, just kidding. It was just basically every other rental car that was not an Intrigue. Mm-hmm. So you're upgraded to the Intrigue. <laughs> the Peugeot. If there was a gun to my head, I could not rank the hierarchy of old meals <laughs> from that period. Yeah. Like what was well, bigger, what was better. There was that period where there were all that, I don't know what the platform uh, designation was, but where there were all that square shape. Mm-hmm. Like the '88, I just remember my friend's dad had an old '88, and it was, but it was like the right angle version. Uh, but they were all that, like all the like trim. But, yeah, but the Alero era, like the Alero, the Intrigue. I don't know what the difference is. Really? 
No. You saw the perfect example at Radwood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is such a classy design. Yeah. The silver Seraph Rolls Royce. Um, kind of the last... I mean, like, while uh, the Phantom is... Your be- like, it's a beautiful modern future Rolls Royce. Like, this is so, like, the, kind of the end of, like, the classic Rolls Royce. Uh, the classic Rolls Royce aesthetic, I suppose. Yeah, totally. Where it, it looks like it could be an old car. And it is now. Uh, Saab 9.3. Yeah, there's a lot of... Which was a 900 with 1,000 changes, they said, in the advertising. Um, but it looks identical to the <laughs> 900. Sehat Leon. Don't know. Slidey? Slidey? Am I saying that right? No, it's no. Sil 80. Sil 80. Oh, Sil Slidey. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, oh, yeah. How was, that's not, that was not produced, was it? Whoa, oh yeah, what is it? It's a 180 SX. With the Sylvia front end. That's so weird. Yeah. Okay. That's weird. Smart for two was, I didn't know that. Was this before it looked like the current? No, it looked like that then. Huh. I didn't know the first gen. I guess we're just so not used to seeing it. Well, I'm not used to seeing it. But I didn't realize that, like, uh, that looked like the current smart. Um, Legacy, third generation. Subaru Playo, we don't know what that is. XL7, still forgettable. Oh yeah, those are those are rare. Bunch of Tatas, the yeah. Camry Solara. Oh yeah. The first one didn't look bad. No, it didn't look bad. The second was very bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Again, they just like injected it with like saline solution, and it just inflated. Botox. Yep. The Toyota Progress. Progress. Whoa. Wow. Wow. That's so funny looking it's like this boxy gs 300 gs 300 400 it's like you know how there's the m45 infinity before they went to the q's or the m45 and it was yeah, like that was a, a good one it was the no, no, not the cool one oh the next one which was bad. oh yeah it was bad yeah yeah but it was just like a bigger more upright version. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's like what this is of like the GS. It is. It and just it looks, looks like more upright. It's based on, it's related to the IS. What? Yeah, of the era. It looks so much bigger. It does. I think it's probably really small. It's just like, there's a lot of body It's panel. like a Centro where it's just all upright. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. The Toyota Revo. Uh, whatever. The Lada. Ned. Is it hot ass? Okay. Uh, whatever. The Lupo, which we never got. Um, they're pretty cool looking. Yeah, I they are kind of cool. And they have like the GTI, well. the Lupo GTI. Yeah. I don't know if there's a Lupo R, is there? I don't think so. Mm. Oh, the Neat Weagle came out, and that was cool when it, it came was, out. I remember yeah. it was a big deal when that came out. Huge deal, yeah. Um, and it was, I mean, it, from an industrial design standpoint, like, wow, what a translation of like the classic design. Yeah. It yeah. was good. I don't even know who the designer was. Uh, Freeman Thomas. Oh, there you go. J. Mays and Freeman Thomas. Fine. <laughs> there you go. So, and boy, they still don't know what to do with, the, like, the heritage of the new Beetle because the new one is, I don't like the new one. Really? Yeah. It's too big looking. Hey. And whether it's the same size or not, like, I don't know. But, like, it's kind of like, I feel like they could have just kept this design. It's one of those cars that they could have kept for, like, 15 years, like, the XC90. and They did keep this for like almost 15 years. <laughs> That's true. Wait, what was to the new one in like 2013. What was the generational? Okay, so the first was 97 to 11. So, yeah, you're right. That is, um, I don't know, math, 14 years. So you're right. It did last. They, well, then they could have kept it for 20 years, mm-hmm. uh, which is actually it would have been um, 20 years, two years ago. The current one is... Uh, it's kind of closer to the original Beetle shape. The current one? Yeah. Really? You think yeah, that? Yeah. I don't know about that. Let's because say. this one, uh, the first, the first new Beetle was kind of like I'm drawing the air. It was kind of like three arcs. It was kind of like a rear fender arc, a uh, which is cabin like the, arc. Which is this? The yes, the new Beetle. Right, but the original, oh, the right, right, original, right, right. original like, Beetle. The is, original Beetle was a Porsche shape. It was, the original Beetle is like a is kind of like a two arc. Yeah, thing. that's true. Okay, fine. So the, I'm saying the current one is closer, but the current one they 
because I guess the it's based on a golf. I guess they had to s- stretch the wheelbase, and so now they had that flat roof to it, like flattish roof. It oh, kind of yeah. killed the like yeah. concept, like because this was kind of like it was a concept turned uh, production car, like one to one almost. Well, it also kind of became its own thing. Yeah, it wasn't tied down to like. Yeah, the the, the old so yeah much. exactly that three like that three. It's kind of funny, like three box, but this is like the three circle design, yeah. three arc design. Yeah, uh, was iconic. Yeah, like I remember, I remember that was they simplified that into like a logo mark, right? Uh, which is kind of cool, and like look at that useless trunk size. What a concept to production! Like I love that. Cool. I like the door, like how the door is just so flat. And, yeah. and toy like it. Honestly, like there is nothing about this is this design that does not make sense. Like. Every line kind of makes sense, and while it was, it's kind of like a kitschy car, and it was pigeonholed as like kind of a slightly feminine product. Uh, but like I, I was remarking to you that I thought the Beetle Turbo, this new Beetle generation, I thought it looked kind of good. Like it, like mimicked Porsche in a way a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've always liked this. Mm-hmm. I remember like when I, <laughs> my. Uh, I think it was in college, but uh, the Saab was dying, <laughs> and uh, my parents were like, you know what you should get? Like, my coworker is selling a new Beetle. Uh, I think it was two years old at that point or something, and I did seriously contemplate it, but it's just I didn't have any interest in it. It didn't, like, intrigue me as a car at the time, but I thought it was a cool design. Yeah. Okay, so uh, did you know anyone who had one who kept the – the vase a friend of the show will pierce had one really yeah i didn't know that he had one it was the cool blue one of the early ones yeah 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 yeah. um yeah i think the way that uh, he had it when we met i think okay did he have the vase yes do you have a flower in it i don't recall okay but I do remember the dash. Like it was kind of a weird interior design of the car, where the, the dashboard dash, was enormous. What? Yeah, it went on for like a mile. Yes. And it, yeah, yeah it, there was so much like material in there that the pencil smell was intense. <laughs> I remember getting into several, and it just smelt, smelt. Ooh. Okay. So next up is the Volvo S80. I almost picked this as my crush just to what? screw with you. Just <laughs> fuck you. This was a good car. I know. I'm a Swedish car in lover. In the copper, in the copper, it was good. No, that was the S60. Oh, they okay. never had one in the copper. That was the C70. This. Yeah, I'm thinking the no. C70. Oh, yes, yeah. and the S, uh, the C70 at launch had, yeah, it was kind of the copper color. That was the car and driver cover photo. Volvo goes sexy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and but this was good. This was the first I of the this. design language I that like this. belt line, that like the belt line went from like um, headlight to tail light, and it was just so like distinguished. It it sort of predated the bangle butt. You know what it did, but it did it better because yeah, it cut yeah. it off because the bangle butt kind of like keeps going. Well, the bangle butt, yeah, yes, yeah. This one just kind of like chops. It's like we got it. Okay, <laughs> no need to see more. Uh, even though the Bangalore has kind of grown into itself now, but the S80 was a good looking car back it in the was. day, and the interior was like revolutionary for like a 90s car. Like, yeah. that is really nice. Um, but then it grew into like kind of a the next gen or like the next and final gen was kind of uh, a blob of generic car, unfortunately. I think Jordan had one, yeah, yeah, he yeah, did. I think so, yeah. He just moved on to a uh, modern day C class. Mm. Yes, it is a. Anyways, um, oh wow! Look at all these variations. Wow. Limo, all these. Wow, they really like. There's an ambulance S80. That's kind of cool. Um. Okay, so that's kind of end of the line. There was one more car. Did you see what it was? I don't know. What it no, was. I didn't see. But it was like a really weird named car. Okay. Okay. So we should end this segment, the new for 98 segment. Yeah. Uh, I cannot, I'm trying to get back to, I just, I'm so curious about what that last car was. There it is. Oh. Oh, it's Zytec Lotus Elise, which is just, the listing is just the Elise. So they might have 
sold it or something. I don't oh, know. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, that's a podcast. I think that's it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Please rate uh, and review us. Yes. Like and subscribe. Uh, if it's positive. Yes. And if it's negative, <laughs> keep it to yourself. Uh, all right. Okay. Goodbye. We're still live. It's still hot. Hot mic. Hot mic.